I'm out exploring today with my buddy Zach. He's finally out of school for the summer. And uh, we literally just came out on this old road, guys. And we've been walking like 10 seconds. <laughs> and uh, look here, bottle dump. You can see glass everywhere, old pop top cans and stuff. Now from what I'm seeing on the surface right now, about 1940s, 1950s, 60s even. You can see ketchup bottles and there's a piece of an ACL soda. So there are a little bit of older stuff in here, but look all the way down through this ditch area. Just pretty much everywhere you're walking. We haven't even stuck any kind of tool in the ground whatsoever. Old shoes, there's an old shoe sticking up out of the ground right there. You can see it's mounded up and there's glass sticking out of the ground everywhere. I guess from the rain we just had uncovered a lot of it for us. But yeah, there's a peanut butter jar down here. There's some green glass. See the peanut butter jar right there. There's a whiskey or syrup container. Yeah, so it's looking like it's going to be a pretty productive day. We are exploring, so we're not going to stay in this area too, too much. We're looking for about 40 or 50 years older stuff. But it's definitely a good sign that they use this old road as dumping. There's a big old bleach jar. There's an old German Cumberland uh, beer can. Some of those cans could probably still be salvageable for sure. But yeah, we're going to just look around the area, guys, and maybe make a couple test holes and see if there's any depth here. And uh, we'll see you back. Guys, just walking around the woods with uh, Zach and spotted this sticking out of the leaves here. So I figured I'd come over and check it out. Looks like a one quart drop A ball perfect mason number two on the base. Looks like it's in real good condition. So we'll take that home and clean it up. You can see how the perfect mason's offset. Right around 1920s, 1930s on that one. So a little bit earlier. Gonna keep looking around. Guys, look at that. You see that peeking out in the leaves right there? I'm just walking around looking at all these mason jars and you know, different things. And I said, Zach, look at that. He's like, oh, milk bottle. So we got a, looks like a one pint milk bottle in the hole, guys. Oh, look at the, it's a uh, Pyroglaze Dairydale. Check that out. Oh, it's got a hole in it. Beautiful Myersdale. Myersdale Pyroglaze milk, though. It says, says, you can whip our cream, but you can't beat our milk. That's cool. Dairydale Dairy. Out of Myersdale, PA. Got a big old hole in the side of it. That would have been a nice one. But we're going to keep looking around. There's a, a Fairmont cream cottage cheese. There's all kinds of... There's a big a big uh, barrel pickle jar. Under these trees, you can see glass poking out. We're going to mess around here a little bit longer. Maybe spot another milk, hopefully. But yeah, that would have been cool. All right, see you back. Look at that, guys. Somebody was back in here getting absolutely hammered. <laughs> little, little mini whiskeys everywhere. All over the place. We're going to keep on looking. We've uh, we found quite a few uh, dumps right around 1930s, 40s era right now. I'll walk you over here for a minute and you can see glass you know pretty much all over the place we're walking around up in here you got oil cans oil filters pieces of mason jars cleaning jars old oil cans I don't know what that is down there, stuck. Some kind of a jack stand or something, maybe. I'm not sure. We're going to keep looking around, though, guys. 
always catch ups. See you back. What can you fungi people tell me about this kind of mushroom growing on this dead tree? I don't know nothing about it, but it's pretty. Real pretty. You can see it's got like kind of whitish stalks. Nice. Standing right in the middle of a dump. Again, we have determined that the road we are on was used exclusively back in the day for dumping. Both sides of the road as far down as we've walked so far have been glass glass everywhere not haven't found anything old yet we've made a couple test holes there's another ball perfect mason little one pint or half pint you can see there's an old sprite can so it does have potential for some nice marbles and stuff like that but we're going to keep walking that's what we're pretty much doing today is exploring for new possible digging sites and uh yeah there's glass everywhere so let's walk out here on the road for a minute and me and zach are and you can see both sides over even on this side of the road over here all along the bank just glass cleaning jars bleach jars mustard jars Pieces of like eating utensils and shoes and pieces of iron. Just all over the place. That big mound area right there is probably a dump. That looks like another old road going back in there. But you can see, just like a four-wheeler trail pretty much we're walking on. Back in there, some more glass. By that tree back there. Look up here, look up ahead, Zach. See that over on the right? Yeah. <laughs> Good golly. Let's walk in there and see what we got. So we're going to walk another 30 feet or so and poke right here into the woods and show you guys what we're both looking at right now. Catch up ball. Another big dump area. Mason jars, fruit jars, ketchup bottles. Walk around and see if there's anything old sticking out of the ground anywhere. Another pickup or uh, ketchup. Syrup bottles. So definitely, definitely a uh, dump site, 100%. 100% a dump site. Really cool, you can just see. If you were uh, to get in the canning or anything like that, this would be your spot you want to come. We even picked up a few real nice lids for the mason jars. There's another cool mushroom right there growing beside that rotting log. There is plastic and stuff mixed in too. Let's just keep walking for a minute. It's peaceful back in here. We're way, way back away from any houses or anything. Another ketchup bottle. Jars. All around this tree. Cleaning jars. Mason jar. Back around the other side, cleaning jars, peanut butter, little tiny condiment containers. Nothing old just yet, guys. We're gonna get back out here on this road. And we're just gonna keep walking. We'll see you back. Guys, I don't know if you can see or not, but way up there. In the path, right there, is a white tailed deer standing real still. Let's see how close we can get to it before it runs off.
nice little creek running down through here. Plastic on the side of the road. Pretty clean through here though, no trash that I'm seeing at the moment. We're gonna keep on going. See you back. Guys, is this what they call that hen of the woods? Stuff right here on this tree. Look at that. Sure does look like a rooster. Like what you would what you would picture a rooster. Look at the ferns growing right through it. It's wild. Going around the side of the tree. Big old piece there. Going around the tree. You can see it all the way around the tree. And then there's a mushroom down there. They definitely like this tree. And you can see glass all around me beer bottles mostly beer bottles back in here we did come across a spot with a bunch of broken milks around 1930s 1940s so far but i thought i definitely wanted to show you guys that i think that's chicken of the woods if it is i'll come back and get it you let me know if it ain't well no harm done that's very neat though growing up the side of this tree all right guys we're gonna keep working at it Back. all right guys zach says this is what the chicken of the woods is right here growing growing on this old rotten log and he said how you can tell is because it don't have gills on it is that right yeah that's and cool the jack-o-lantern uh mushroom has gills on it and the jack-o-lantern mushroom has gills on it so that one's edible right there? Yeah. Dang. You ever ate one? Mm-hmm. They're good? Yeah, they're pretty good. Oh, we might have to take that one there. Let's get it. Let's find something to put that bad boy in. We're going to get some chicken of the woods, guys. Maybe we can find some more. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, there's bottles all around us. Look, that one even has some, some nice contents inside of it. Mmm. Good stuff. Eat that with some chicken of the woods. <laughs> yeah. All right, see you back. Look right here, guys. Me and Zach's just walking up this old road, looking for bottles. And that beautiful specimen right there, right on the path, chilling. Beautiful little newt. You can see the nice little speckled dots all around it. Real pretty guy. Heck yeah. Gotta love nature. Gonna just leave him be. Look how delicate he looks. He goes. See you, little fella. Alright, we're on our way back out. Just stopping and checking some more spots on the way back out. You can see a broken milk there what looks to possibly be a full milk right there let's see nope it's broke too heck nabbit yeah broke there's another possibly broken one maybe full not that one on the side it see the neck of it sticking up yep okay oh another broken milk so we're we're in a possible milk dump spot anyway we're gonna poke around and do a couple little small test holes and see if anything full comes out there's jars and stuff in here you can see milks broken milks beer bottles i don't know Let's see if we can find anything full stay tuned we might have a full milk bottle guys in the hole Yeah. Slick. Is it a slick? Yeah. Dad, gum it. A full one quart slick milk bottle. <laughs> That's how it normally works out. Yep. There are some full ones in here though. We know that now. So we're going to keep messing around. Maybe. Maybe find one that's painted up. We'll see you back. Guys, you can see I'm just taking the rake and uh, just pulling stuff back. Lots of bottles coming out, and I think a little half pint milk just came out. Let's check it out and see. 
Yep. A little half pint of milk. Slick walrus head, though. <laughs> they are coming out, though. That one would have been embossed. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any embossing on it at all. Right around 1920s, though, on that one. That's a little earlier. That's what we're after. We're going to keep working at it. See you guys. I just popped out a Kaiser, West Virginia ACL soda bottle with a K on it or something like that. It's pretty white, but you can still make out some of it. Bottled by Kaiser, West Virginia, right there. Yeah, something beverage company. Something root beverage company. Not sure. We're going to keep working at it, though. Zach's right there picking around. Only a couple inches deep dump. I'm right here picking around. Check Let's out what that. Zach just popped out, guys. A boat candy container. Dude, that is sweet. Heck yeah, right out of that little tiny hole right there. That is what I'm talking about, brother man. Heck yeah. Nice. A boat candy container. They're going to keep messing around. What's that? Just a little screw top perfume. All right, we'll see you back. Zach is on it, guys. He just pulled out an embossed Art Deco soda. Yep. What's it say on it? You can't read it? Uh, contains sugar carbonated. Uh, it should have an actual name of the soda. Uh, yeah, it's right here. It's Hires beverage oh or shape shapers beverage oh shapers chase yeah, that's out of cumberland i believe almost positive shapes beverages or not cumberland i think oakland i think that's out of oakland maryland yep oakland maryland shapes beverages that's a nice one zach yeah. heck yeah guys check that out Oakland, Maryland, Shapes Beverages, 1930s Art Deco Soda. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Pulling them out. See you back. Looks like we got a Hires Root Beer in the hole right there, guys. You can see some of the ACL still on it. Yeah. Nice ACL Hires Root Beer. It says with roots, something herbs. And this one is out of... Philadelphia, Philadelphia, PA, Irish Root Beer, cool. Kaiser Beverage, look at that, nice ACL, that's what the one would have looked like with the K on it. That might clean up pretty good, Zach. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one before, brother. Kaiser Beverage Company, guys, ACL, from Kaiser, West Virginia, heck yeah. The sparkling rich flavor of Kaiser beverage made only with the pure and fine ingredients. Pure and fine ingredients. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to keep messing around. I'll right, see you back. All right, you can see me and Zach's been trenching. Only about maybe six inches deep on this one. Lots and lots of jars coming out. Tons of jars. Little whiskey bottle. So far, I got a 7-Up ACL. I got a soda water from Cumberland, Maryland, Art Deco soda, and a Orange Crush, Oakland, Maryland soda bottle. You can see like shingles and all kinds of mason jars, tons and tons of beer bottles. And then right here, I just popped out what looks to be a one quart milk. Let's get it and see. Come on, baby. Uh -huh. It is a slick. Another slick one quart milk bottle. Dag nabbit. We're getting skunked on the milks today. I'm just going to work it a little bit longer. And then I think we're going to call it a day. But we're going to keep trying. See you back. What is up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how exactly I clean my bottles. This thing uh, about four hours ago was just disgustingly nasty, full of dirt and 
grows contents and stuff. Came out of a buddy's cellar, uh, yeah, fruit cellar that I helped him clean out about three years ago. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to get these kind of results. Fairly simple too. But yeah, look at that beautiful uh, Atlas Mason from the Hazel Atlas Company. Big half gallon. Gonna be cleaning quite a bit of jars today and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's get it. All right guys, so check this out. Here we have a large box full of mason jars that I got out of a buddy of mine's cellar for uh, helping him clean it out. He told me I could keep anything I wanted. I actually have several boxes just like this and you can see they're absolutely filthy nasty nobody's gonna want them in the auction huh <laughs> so i'm gonna show you exactly what i do with these bad boys first we're gonna mix up our formula for soaking so let's go get that done all right so here i have a trash can and a bucket in my bathtub right up next to a window for some fumes to go out in case and today i'm gonna be using some purple power cleaner degreaser so i'm just gonna dump a little bit in there a little bit in there all right so we got the royal purple power in there and also, we're going to put some Mean Green Super Strength. Just a little bit in each one there. And a little tiny bit of Dawn Dish Antibacterial. Just a little bit in each one. Then we're going to fill them up using the shower. Okay, so while this is in the process of filling up, I'm going to go ahead and start adding these jars. Nice ball, offset, perfect mason. Looks like a light aqua color. I'm using lukewarm water. You don't want it too hot and you don't want it too cold to shock the glass. Just room temperature water is good. And uh, you want to submerge it. So this is a half gallon. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill it up with water, otherwise it'll start floating around and banging into the other bottles. And then I'll just sort of situate them as it fills up. I'm just going to keep adding more and more bottles around. And same thing in the bucket. Alright, we got all our jars put in there, soaking. We're going to let them sit for about three hours. We're going to let them soak in there for about three hours, break up all the... Uh, dirt and old material that's stuck in the jars and then we're going to take them out and go to step two so stay tuned three hours all right three hours later here we have our jars still soaking in our nice solution and basically all we're going to just do is just reach in and grab one empty out what's remaining on it you can see it's got a little bit of stuff on there and then we're going to go over to the sink okay we are at the sink what i'm going to be using today to clean my bottles i've got a funnel just to help get the copper down inside without making a big mess i've got my cut copper number 21 short cut copper is what i use from the jardoctor.com and uh, basically it looks like that right there just like little rabbit pellets of copper almost. So that's what I'm going to be using. Got a uh, strainer in my sink so the stuff doesn't go down the drain. But it's been soaking for a couple hours. You can see still got some staining on it. So first off, I'm just going to give it a quick little rinse. And some lukewarm water. Not too hot, not too cold. Doesn't look too, too bad really. Then I'm going to take my funnel and I'm going to fill the jar up about halfway full of copper. About halfway full of copper. Then I'm going to put water in there. A little past the copper line you can see there. Just over top of the copper I've got water now. 
shut that off. And basically, I'm just going to cap over the top here and give it a good shaking. Just like that. Flip it over to the other side real quick. Dump that out in my seam. Got some uh, Scotch Brite steel wool stuff you, you wash your dishes with. And basically, I'm just going to go across where the lid was, where the rust part is. And that'll remove all that. And basically, less than a minute, give it another good little rinse to finish off. In less than a minute, check that bad boy out right there. Just an absolutely pristine little half pint ball perfect mason with the number six on the base of it. Cleaned up real nice, ready for tonight's auction. I've only got about 30 more of these to do. So, gonna see a little time lapse. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically all it is to it, guys. Soak for three hours in my wife's special solution. Give it a little copper bath. Done deal. Rinse or uh, dry it off and enjoy. Super, super easy. No real harsh chemicals. Nothing that's going to hurt you or your kids or anything like that. And the copper is a softer compound in the glass, so it doesn't scratch it, doesn't put any kind of nicks in it or nothing you can see it just cleans it up absolutely flawless right there that is my one minute bottle cleaning method drop a like down below and uh enjoy i'm just going to go ahead and run through these real quick show you the before and afters and do a quick little time lapse Look how pretty. Curved self sealing mason jar. Beautiful marble jar. Or you could reuse it as a food jar if you really wanted to. Real pretty amber half pint. Check that nice little cannon jar out. Let's make it shine. This one doesn't really even need any copper. I'll just take my my little bottle cleaning brush pretty much is what it is. Give it a little scrubbing. Maybe a little steel wool on the outside of the threads. And that's about all this one needs. Yeah, not all of them need not all of them need the copper. That one cleaned up absolutely beautiful with no copper at all. Just a real nice amber cleaning jar. We have another beautiful one quart ball perfect mason. You can see it's got some of the remaining contents inside of it still. It's got some of that rust on the outside of it. And a big tin on the base. Let's see what we can do with it.
Things up pristine. You notice different kind of things like right here. See that little dot? That's actually a piece of glass protruding on the inside right there. Very, very neat characteristic that I didn't notice till I cleaned that bad boy up. Beautiful ball perfect mason with the number 10 on the base. Check this one out, I just pulled out of the bucket, guys. Incredible. Half gallon ball perfect mason offset. That thing, pretty much just soaking it. Cleaned it up immaculate, you can see. Just a little bit of rust from where the uh, lid was. Gotta clean that off real quick, but don't even need any copper on that one, that one. So pretty, such a beautiful jar. Look what an absolutely beautiful mason jar. Big half gallon ball perfect mason offset. The number four on the base. And like a Roman numeral two. That thing is gorgeous right there. Heck yeah. Check that one out. Real pretty green color. Got an old 73 written on there. It's wiping off, you can see, but I'm guessing 1973, this was used as a canning jar. Very, very neat. Looks like everything on this one's on the outside of the jar. It's got some sticky stuff, or maybe another jar broke or spilled on it. <coughs> the cellar these came out of, excuse me, the cellar these came out of, all the shelves were falling in, the uh, walls were half falling in, so all the jars and stuff were laying, a lot of them were laying on the ground, you know, in big piles. Some of them still even had the contents in them, which I still have a couple of them. I'll show you guys what some of them look like. Let me get this rinsed off. Check that beautiful bad boy out right there. Nice one quart ball perfect mason with the tin on it. Guy must have liked the number 10. Find that on a lot of the jars. Let me grab one of these real quick that has the uh, contents still in it. I'll show you guys. But that's nice right there. Check that one out. Real pretty green color. Got an old 73 written on there. It's wiping off, you can see, but. I'm guessing 1973, this was used as a canning jar. Very, very neat. <coughs> huh. Looks like everything on this one's on the outside of the jar got some sticky stuff or maybe another jar broke or spilled on it. <coughs> the 
the cellar these came out of, excuse me, the cellar these came out of, all the shelves were falling in, the uh, walls were half falling in, so all the jars and stuff were laying, a lot of them were laying on the ground, you know, in big piles. Some of them still even had the contents in them, which I still have a couple of them. I'll show you guys what some of them look like. Let me get this rinsed off. Check that beautiful bad boy out right there. Nice one quart ball perfect mason with the tin on it. Guy must have liked the number 10. Find that on a lot of the jars. Let me grab one of these real quick that has the uh, contents still in it. I'll show you guys. But that's nice right there. Oh yeah, check that one out. Got some 1970s. It says Mom's. Mom's Mason Jar. Full of green beans. Mm-hmm. Good stuff right there, guys. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's usually how they come out looking uh, when you first dig them or find them in people's attics and cellars and stuff. A lot of the times they still have the food inside of them. That one not too bad with green beans, but stewed tomatoes, uh, potatoes, all kinds of really nasty stuff in some of them. Here's a real nice one pint ball perfect mason offset real dirty inside but it has been soaking should be ready to get cleaned up Absolutely beautiful, deep, rich aqua on that one. That thing is nice right there, guys. Got the drop A, not 3L. Little tiny bit of rust up here. I can still take the uh, steel wool to, and that'll clean right up. Perfect. Beautiful one pint barrel mason jar. That's a toughie right there. You don't see those too often. Dirty as can be though. Let's fix that. In one minute or less. This one really, just soaking it brought everything off of it except for the, uh, the rust up here. So we'll just hit it with the steel wool. That should be all she needs. Yeah. Real nice base wear on that one too, that's cool. Check out the barrel mason jar guys, you can see the little rivets made just like a keg a barrel keg isn't that wild there's the tap <laughs> sweet